السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners we all know that these are the last few nights of the month of Ramadan, the most blessed of nights of this particular month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to take away whomsoever He wishes on these nights or within these days, blessed days of the month of Ramadan. Definitely it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be taken away in nights or in days like these days. News has got to me yet again of yet another of the mothers of the community I come from who was taken away tonight. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her mercy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill her grave with nur and to grant her paradise and to grant sabr to all those whom she has left behind. As well as all those who have passed away in this community and in all the communities of the Muslimin across the globe. The marhumin of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. And the day he takes us away, may he take us away with ease. And may he also have mercy on us on that particular day. Beloved brothers and sisters, we all know that marriage is a topic that everyone lights up when they hear it. Alhamdulillah. For those who are married, they have a lesson to learn. And for those who are not married, they have even more lessons to learn inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us something very very strong and powerful. He says, I guarantee paradise for certain people. If you guarantee me something, I guarantee you heaven. I guarantee you paradise. So what did he say? He says, مَن يَضْمَلْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ فَخِذَيْهِ أَضْمَلْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever guarantees me the correct use of what is between the cheeks and the correct use of what is between the thighs I guarantee them paradise Allahu Akbar it sounds nice and simple but our whole life rotates around it you can guarantee the correct use of your tongue and your private parts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you through the lips of the most blessed that you have a guarantee of paradise may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us Every creature of ours we've created in pairs, if only but you would remember, or in order that you may remember and be reminded. Subhanallah. We have positive and negative, we have male and female, we have live and neutral, we have the sun and the night. Or should I say the day and the night? Everything we have in pairs, whether it is a plant, there is masculine and feminine. Fish, masculine, feminine. You have the eggs and you have the masculine of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. So it is part and parcel of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His plan. He says that indeed it is amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created spouses for you from amongst you for a reason. And that reason is made mention in the Qur'an in order that you may achieve comfort from your spouse, in order that you may enjoy the pleasure of your spouse's company, in order that you may live with pleasure and with happiness, in order that you may have every reason to smile. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. What happens to us nowadays, before marriage, we've already lived together under the shadows of shaitan. So shaitan beautifies everything for us and we then marry for the wrong reasons. And then what happens is, once we marry, shaitan's job turns 180 degrees. Instead of trying to make you commit adultery, now that you are halal, automatically he wants you to fight with one another so you can commit adultery with someone else. And that is why as soon as people who have married for the wrong reasons get married, they then come complaining to say, this was not the same person I knew before I was married. The reason is sometimes the way we did it was totally wrong. So let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says in Surah Al-Rum, 
ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون From the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has created for you from amongst you a spouse in order for you to achieve comfort and pleasure from and indeed Allah has placed in your hearts love for one another. He has placed in your hearts love for one another and definitely that is a sign for those who would like to ponder. Subhanallah. People who are married for the right reasons and they have been married under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Naturally, they will have a feeling towards their wives or husbands. They will feel, they will feel very, very protective and very possessive. That is a natural feeling that Allah places automatically, which was not there prior to the nikah, prior to the marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors. Another very interesting point, the laws of the sharia regarding marriage, which is known as nikah, is very, very easy. The reason why Allah has made marriage one of the most easy acts of worship, one of the most easy, really, if you take a look at it, how quick it happens, one of the most easy transactions that take place. You know, if you want to do a business deal, it takes a little bit longer. But if you would like to get married, it's a one minute job, 30 seconds in most. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. One of the reasons why this is the case is because nobody must be left with an excuse to fall in the trap of shaitan and commit adultery. Anyone who commits adultery does not have an answer to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I've intentionally made it easy for you. Are you still going to go out to hunt for haram when I have allowed you to marry? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and happiness in our marriages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Amazingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important the consciousness of Allah is when it comes to marriage. A successful marriage is based on certain elements. Let's take a look at the verses that are read at the time of nikah. The time when someone wants to get married, there is a sunnah. It is not like it is compulsory to read these verses, but generally it is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ which should be adopted. Because a sunnah is not to be taken lightly, it is something great. One of the verses read there. Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakumu alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah. O mankind, be conscious of your Rabb. Be conscious of your creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider. Be conscious of the one you are going to return to. The one who has created you from one soul. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And he has created from that soul its spouse. Which means Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon her, was created from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. There is nothing bad to confirm that yes, she was created from the rib of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam according to the narration which is correct of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There are people who are tackling this narration. That is unvalid. We have actually been through it and we've been through it, authenticating it. People who want to appease the women folk to say you were created from a crooked rib. And that is why they want to start fighting the narrator of the hadith who is Abu Huraira. That is dangerous. Accept the hadith. It is an honor to be created from something alive. Whereas man was created from something dead. And that is soil. Allahu Akbar. So that is a plus point for the females inshallah. Sometimes that is why the men say, that is why they talk too much. May Allah protect us. They were created from something alive. That is not what we believe. We definitely believe that it is an honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for both men and women. Remember, a woman was granted as a gift to man after he made so much dua. It is reported by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah in one of his books, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, that Adam alayhi salatu was salam was very lonely. And he made a dua, Ya Allah, I am lonely. Imagine he was one of his kind. The rest were in pairs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he made a dua for a period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day decided to give him a gift in the form of a female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize that females are actually gifts to us. 
And may he make the females realize that they are meant to be living in such a way that they act like gifts to us. Alhamdulillah. Sometimes you have females beating up the males. I don't know which gift comes out of the box and beats up the one whom they are given as a gift to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that. And it's amazing how powerful it is. Allah says, I have created the female from the male. That is a clear verse at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa. Then he says, وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً And he has caused a multitude, a multitude of growth of male and female throughout the globe from those two. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us also to continue this progeny or this offspring, man who will be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Be conscious of Allah. Notice how it is repeating itself again. Allah says, be conscious of Allah. Because consciousness of Allah, and I am adding this obviously, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vital when it comes to marriage. If you take a wife or if a wife has a husband and you are conscious of your duty to your creator, the fact that he is watching you, the fact that he is always there, you will never disrespect or cheat or utter words which are bad or you will never do anything wrong because you know that Allah is there. He is more able. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be conscious of Allah and be conscious of the wombs. Allahu Akbar. Be conscious of al-arham. Arham is the plural of rahim which means the womb of a woman. Those relatives of yours who are related to you through birth, Allah says, be conscious of them. Be conscious of your wives, your mothers, your mothers in law, and so on. Remember, a man has a role to play, and that role is to strike a balance between his wife, his own mother, and his parents in law. And if a, if a man is not going to play his role and run away and duck and dive, he will create a bigger disaster. He needs to draw lines from day one to say, Mom, I love you the most. But the love I love you is totally different from the love I love my wife. That is a different type of love. Mom, this is the line you shall not cross. And my beloved wife, here is a line you don't cross. That is my mother, you don't come and tell me stories about her. If she is wrong, you mention it in a very polite manner. You don't fight with her, maybe you can come to me and tell me in a polite manner exactly what is going on. But I don't want to hear tales and fairy tales and stories which, are, which have salt and pepper added to them just to make me against my own mother. Allahu Akbar. You will never be able to replace a mother, but a wife, you can have ten of them. Allahu Akbar. Remember four at any given time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. I better clarify that because people might go and say, this man believes you can have ten wives. No. What we mean is, you can get another wife and another one if you'd like. But your mother, there's only one. At the same time, there are many mothers who are very sadly oppressive towards their daughters-in-law. We have witnessed it and we have seen it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. In the English language, they are called in-laws. One wonder why the law has to come into place. Maybe the lawyers and everyone else also gets involved at some stage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We need to have a brilliant relationship. You must give your children independence after they are married. The only time you interfere is when they are going against the commands of Allah. If they are not reading salah or dressing inappropriately or swearing and so on, then you can interfere. It is your duty. But whether or not they attend a function with you is up to them. Whether or not they live with you is up to them. And you should happily allow them to live separately because that is a right that they have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. My experience is those who live further away from their parents are happier with their parents than those who live within the same house. That is experience. We have seen it and witnessed it across the globe. You cannot have two kings in one kingdom, nor can you have two queens in the same kingdom. So if your wife is a queen, your mother is also a queen. And if both want to rule, they are going to cross paths at some stage. It is not going to work. One woman per kitchen. Let us try and use that rule and understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding and yes if there are people who love each other and they are living with the live and let live policy then alhamdulillah we will encourage that as well in the rare case where mother-in-law is getting on with daughter-in-law then alhamdulillah that is nurun ala nur that is light upon light it is goodness may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the very beginning be careful be conscious and he says 
you, Allah is watchful over you. He is writing down absolutely everything. There are angels writing down what you are doing, how you are thinking, what you are saying, behind closed doors, how you are treating your wife, your children, those who are near you. That is a verse that is read when the nikah is about to take place in the masjid. Let's look at another verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. O you who believe, the first address was O people. This one here is O you who believe, be conscious of your Rabb as you are meant to be conscious of Him. And do not die except in the condition of submission. Look at how the verses of consciousness are being repeated. Not by mistake, intentionally at the time of nikah. To remind you, watch out from this day, be extra conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who oppresses a woman, Allahu Akbar. We will come to verses tonight inshallah if Allah gives us the time. Otherwise we will continue tomorrow with the same topic if we do not complete it inshallah. Because I don't want to rush through one of the most important topics. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he listens to a woman who complains directly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has revealed another verse that we read at the same occasion. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa koolu qawlan sadeeda. Yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, O oh you who believe, be conscious of your Creator and only utter that which is upright, that which is correct, that which is full of politeness, that which is full of bringing people together. Abstain from that which will create problems and difficulty and disunity. Only utter that which will bring about happiness, that which will bring about a smile, that which will bring about justice. Allah says, only utter that which is upright. If you do that, then definitely Allah will make pure your deeds for you and forgive your sins. Whomsoever follows Allah and His Messenger has definitely won and is very greatly victorious. Imagine Allah is telling you, follow Allah and His Messenger. If your wife instructs you to do something haram, you won't listen. And if your husband instructs you to do something prohibited, you won't listen. Because Allah and His Messenger are to be followed before everybody else. That verse also implies that directly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, only utter that which is upright. Why is it so important to mention the words of the tongue at the occasion of marriage? Because 99% of marital problems are connected to our tongues. 99% of problems are connected to the way we speak in our marriages. We need to utter on a daily basis words that will put a smile on the faces of our spouses. We need to crack jokes which are decent inshallah with our spouses. The Prophet ﷺ did it. He made his wives smile and blush and laugh as well. Subhanallah. Obviously within the limits. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was as romantic as could be. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was an incident when he was eating a piece of meat. And Aisha radiallahu anha picked up this piece of meat and bit from it. And he looked at her from the corner of his eye. And he watched that she was watching him. So he picked up the piece of meat and he turned it around to find the place that she bit from. And looking at her with the corner of his eye, he then bit from exactly the same place, making her blush. Subhanallah. With us, if the wife has bitten, we will say, if I bite, I'm going to get the cough you have. (laughs) Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, to drink from a cup at exactly the same position that your wife drank from is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we have to wait for the month of Ramadan? To hear this type of thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us a lot. And this is why he says, look, be careful of your tongues. You can utter good words or bad words. Say for example, there is something that you notice within the marriage. You need to talk. Communication is the most important thing in marriage. A lot of women folk, very sadly, they are upset. Suddenly it takes three weeks to find out why they were upset. And then we will find out it was something that really was not even worth mentioning. And this is why advice to everyone in this verse, 
speak that which is upright. Speak up when you have to speak. Because when you are silent, when you have to speak, it is also against the etiquettes of marriage. And a happy home will not be achieved. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. You need to talk. You have a problem, speak. But in good words. If you are sick, say that, look, I'm not well, that's why I'm not smiling. A husband comes to the home after a long day in, at work and he sees a woman cross. Wallahi, it puts his heart really on a different note, very low note. He feels like leaving the house once again. But a woman, to be honest with you, controls the love that a man has for her in almost all cases. Because when a woman pampers the man and looks after him and smiles at him and waits for him and is prepared to, to cook for him and really do everything for him naturally even if he likes it or not at some stage he will feel an inclination towards this woman and this is why the Prophet wasallam, when he distributed his wealth and his time perfectly he then says Allahumma hadha qasami fima amlik fala tuakhidni fima la amlik Oh Allah, I've distributed that which I control between my wives. I am being just amongst them. So now don't hold against me what I do not control. And that is how much I love them. They control it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He said clearly, I love Aisha more than the rest. Fadlu Aisha ka fadli taridi ala sa'ir ta'am. He says, Aisha, the virtue of her above all the other women is like the virtue of the favorite food above the rest of the food. When you see the favorite food, mashallah, you will first take it close to you. And you will first eat from it. Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed us. And the instruction is for all of us to ensure that we are just with our wives. And at the same time, we realize and understand that the love generally if a man is a normal man, then he, the, how much he loves his wife will mainly depend on what she does for him or what she does not do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our wives from amongst those who can serve us. The western world is teaching us that the wife doesn't need to serve the husband. And that is why you find the husband then looks outside the doors in order to look for someone whom he will get attention from. Someone who might cook for him because the wife says you must bring takeaways. Takeaways are good once in a while. Some people are marrying on condition that the husband brings takeaways on a daily basis. Or you must take me out every Saturday, I won't cook. If that is the case, yes, he might do it for us with his wealth, but you lose his love. Allahu Akbar. The heavier you are on his pocket, the less he will love you. It is a fact, it is natural and it happens. The more demanding you are, the less he loves you. He will go for someone else. And who would have caused that? Yourself with your own actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Many men who look outside many times, many times, and many, many times the woman is to blame, but it's difficult for us to tell her. Because sometimes she cannot discuss the topics of what is going on behind the scenes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is why He tells us how important communication is in marriage. Let me quickly go through some of the most important items that will make a home extremely happy. If you would like a happy home and a happy marriage, you need to spend time with one another. You need to spend time with your wife and your children and your family members. You need to be tolerant of one another. You need to tolerate the differences that you have and speak. You need to trust one another completely. Don't pry into each other's little corners and cubicles. May Allah protect us. And at the same time, don't give your spouse the reason to doubt you. But don't ever doubt your spouse unnecessarily just by an anonymous phone call or something. Because that is a cancer. It will lead to divorce. And believe me, at times people are just mischief makers. All marriages go through turbulence. Let's understand and realize that if we are going to trust our spouses and give them a chance and tolerate and so on, inshallah, we will be able to deal with our crises. Another very interesting point, to be tender and lenient, to be calm and polite, that is also a very, very interesting point that we need to take or bear in mind if we'd like our marriages to work. A person who is hard and harsh or a female who is hard and harsh in the way she talks, Others will turn away from them according to the Quran. O Prophet of Allah, if you were hard-hearted and if you were harsh, 
they would have dispersed from you. If that instruction was for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what about us with our own spouses? They will disperse from us if we are hard and heavy. They will not like us. That their love for us will be reduced. So let us learn to speak in a very polite manner with sweet words. You have to beautify your voice when you are speaking to your spouse. Why do we tend to do that when we are speaking to others besides our spouses, whom we are not even supposed to be talking to in the first place? Won't that then result in some form of negativity in the hearts of our spouses when they say, our husband is good to all the women on earth, but not to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. A person who is excellent to other women on the street, nine times out of ten when he comes home, they fear him. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We need to be normal outside. You don't have to be overly excellent. Normal outside, but at your home or within the house, you need to be overly excellent inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us politeness another very interesting point is we need to realize marriage is all about sacrifice if you are not prepared to sacrifice then your marriage will probably not work it will be void of love you need to sacrifice your time your effort your money your brains your mind everything needs to be sacrificed and there is no room for laziness in marriage. Many people are in love and then suddenly they get married. And then the wife doesn't even know how to cook. May Allah protect us. And she sleeps until 11 in the morning. If that is the case, he will get lazy and he will get fed up and he won't. Or the love in his heart for you will begin to diminish very soon. Because there are other women who get up at 5 in the morning and make a hot cup of tea with a little bit of breakfast and bring it to bed. May Allah protect us all. I'm not encouraging, promoting or demoting any breakfasts in bed. But at the same time, we are saying that we need to think of this. Don't be lazy. Look after the children and you will earn the love of your husband, inshallah. At the same time, spoil him rotten. And inshallah, you will protect yourself from being rotten, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of how important it is to sacrifice in marriage, to be thankful and grateful to, for what your spouse has done for you. If your wife is looking after your children and is cooking for you and so on, think about it for a moment. How much time and effort does she spend behind you? And at the same time, when the husband is spending so many hours earning a livelihood in order to bring back a plate of food on the table, thank him at times. Say, I thank you, I appreciate it. Wallahi, you've done so much for me. I really, really appreciate this and show it in every single way. Thankfulness is part and parcel of rekindling your marriage, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how important expressions on your face are. Always have a smile. Always try to be happy. Always show good expressions. You know, a wink or two is also quite romantic at times between husband and wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us use our expressions where they are most beneficial and not where they are detrimental. Outside the home, mashallah, we have a smile stuck on our faces. As soon as we come home, we are frowning like we've never ever frowned before. Remember, even if you'd like, if you'd like to age slowly, why I say slowly is because we have to age. If Allah gives us life, we have to age. But if you'd like to age slowly, learn to smile. Believe me, you will, you will not age as quickly as those who frown. When you frown, your forehead has a mark. And that mark will become really engraved into your forehead. Even when you are happy, they will still see that mark. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So it's a reality. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that we need to have an understanding between one another. You need to draw your limits and your lines. Say what you want. Tell her what will make you happy and let her tell you what will make her happy. And you need to know what is going to make your spouse upset and angry and stay away from it. This is something that we need to understand. Another very interesting point. We need to put ourselves in the spouse's shoes. So a man must look at it from the angle of the woman. And the woman must look at it from the angle of a man in order to come and try and understand where they are coming from. That is extremely important. Another very interesting point. The tone of your voice and the volume of your voice. If you raise your voice in the house, you will decrease your respect in the house. When you scream, you, you reduce your respect in the house immediately. And when you do not shout and scream and you do not swear, then inshallah people will respect you. The minute you scream, your value has already been lost in the eyes of those who witnessed that. If it was your children, they will remember it forever and ever. And this is why for husband and wife to swear or scream or shout or accuse or clean their linen in front of the children is extremely dangerous. Because as the children grow up, it will haunt them forever and ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection. 
And also, this is why it is important that we realize when we scream and shout, we will sound like donkeys as the Quran says. And who wants to marry a donkey? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding. I know I'm using terms here to keep people awake at this time of the night, alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to make us from those who can use the best of words to select your word when you are speaking to your wife or your children is an act of worship. So if you want to tell your children not to make noise, if you say shut up without thinking, you will not be rewarded for it and you might even be sinful for using abusive language. But if you were to think very carefully and say, I can either say keep quiet or I can say lower the volume or I can either look at them and put a finger on my lips in order to tell them to be silent. I must employ the best method to portray what I'd like, to say what is in my heart. If I want to put it across, let me choose the best word. Allah has given us a brain. This brain, we need to use it in the house before we use it outside, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. These are just some tips to start with. Look at the topic, Allahu Akbar. Now let's go through the verses of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how to choose a spouse. We need to choose a person. When we are choosing, we look at several qualities. You look at the beauty. There's nothing wrong in looking at the beauty. Alhamdulillah. You can look at their standing, their reputation and so on. But that must not be the deciding factor. The deciding factor must be the closeness to Allah. How pious are they? How conscious are they of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you are choosing a wife, you are choosing the mother of your children. If you forget that for a minute, you will be failing in the long run. Because let me tell you, the children generally are taught by the mother. If the mother is a person who was not brought up but grew up like wild grass, then there will be no upbringing for her children. They will also just grow like wild grass. May Allah protect us. There is a very big difference between being brought up and just growing up. We would like to bring up our children and we would not like to see them just grown up suddenly. And who brought them up? The street. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why it is very, very detrimental for a woman to give up her role as a woman. Because, yes, it might not be prohibited to go out to work within the Islamic limits. But you may just be giving up your obligation of looking after your children. And nowadays we have a new generation of orphans with parents. They are orphaned because the father and mother are not there whole day. They are brought up by the neighbors and the school and the maids. And then when they come home at a certain age, suddenly the parents realize my son is already in love and my son already has AIDS and my son is already on drugs. Then they come crying. But where were you, my dear mother? I was at work. And where were you, you, my dear father? I was at work. What time did you go to work? At six in the morning. When did you come back? At eight at night. Did you ever spend time with your children? The answer is no. Who is to blame? You, Allahu Akbar. This is why let's realize that it's a last resort. For women to work is a last resort. Do not be upset. Believe me, there are women in the West who are now fed up of working. They've realized that this is all a farce. Men want to use us and abuse us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If you play your role that Allah has kept for you, Wallahi, I promise you, you will not go wrong. You will be happy when you see your children grow up and hug you and thank you for the upbringing. A woman, her primary role is to give birth and to look after the children and the home. That is why Allah placed the womb in her belly and not in the belly of a man. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept feminine qualities of motherhood in her and not in a man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to respect our mothers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the mothers of this ummah responsible mothers as well as the fathers of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So when we are choosing a spouse, we should realize if you have based your opinion only on beauty, beauty will go. If you have based your opinion only on wealth, the wealth will go. If you have based your opinion only on reputation, the reputation may be tarnished overnight. But if you base it on spirituality, the spirituality will only increase as time passes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So we are not saying don't look at what she looks like. No, you need to look at what she looks like. You need to look at all the other aspects as well. But if there is no deen, no religion, no spirituality, you'd rather go for someone else and you'd rather go for a third person or a fourth or a fifth and continue trying until you get to the one who has the deen as well as the beauty, insha'Allah. Something that is acceptable to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, insha'Allah, happiness within our homes. 
I see a lot of people are looking at me quite gloomy. I think they married and they feel they might have already made mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Really. Please don't give me those looks inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enhance our marriages inshallah. There is always an opportunity to rekindle a marriage if you would like to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to resolve and solve our problems and disputes. Amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then informs us of how we should not marry those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are on a different page altogether. Imagine people come and tell us that you know I'd like to get married to this person. They're not Muslim and they don't want to become a Muslim. Well to be honest with you, I want to give you an example. If you are a vegetarian, completely, you, you, are not, you cannot have anything else. And there is a woman who only is on a seafood diet. I don't mean seafood as in whenever she sees food, she eats it. But I mean seafood as in fish. If she is only on a seafood diet, and you are only a vegetarian, you might get on for one month or two months maximum. After that, the cracks will appear. You will get fed up of seeing fish when you can't eat it. And she will get fed up of seeing vegetable when she can't have it. So if people whose difference in food will cause a split in marriage, then you should realize religion is far more important. You are on two different pages. That marriage will never ever work. I don't know to this day of a single marriage of people of different religions that has worked in the manner that marriages are supposed to work unless they are really forcing themselves to be with one another. At some point down the line it has broken or there are huge cracks. And if there is anyone whom it hasn't cracked yet, believe me it's coming. Wait for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So let us not look for those outside our religion. Because if we as men want to marry women outside our religion, who will marry our women? The men from outside our religion as well. And that is completely prohibited. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deep understanding. So if we take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنْ don't ever marry one who associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside the fold of Islam until they accept Islam. Allah says a slave girl who is a mu'mina is better than a free lady who has a high ranking who is not a mu'mina. Even if she amazes you and impresses you by her wealth or her looks and what have you. Allah says it's better for you to have gone for a slave girl who was a mu'mina, who was a believer, than one who was not a believer and who was high in ranking, in social ranking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And the same applies to the females. Allah says, do not marry the non-Muslims until they accept Islam. That is the address to the females. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding, really. So if someone is ready to accept Islam, yes, we will welcome them into our religion inshallah, and we will open our arms and accept them into this religion and into our homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to choose spouses who will be the best for us inshallah. Now let's get to something else. Sometimes a person who enters the fold of Islam is actually at a later stage a better Muslim than those who brought them into the fold. Allahu Akbar. And we've witnessed that and we've seen it a lot as well. So if a person comes into the fold of Islam sometimes, and sometimes they might come in because of the marriage, but later on Allah grants them the true guidance where they begin to obey the instructions of the religion in a deeper manner than us because they've seen the other side of the coin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us as strong and even stronger inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are not allowed to marry those whom your fathers have been intimate with in any way. Don't ever marry those whom your fathers have been intimate with. If they have married them naturally, if your father has married someone, they are naturally your mahram. They are your closest, your close relatives. You cannot marry someone whom your father has married. Nor can you marry someone whom your son has married. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. And there is a list of people whom we are not allowed to marry in the Quran. Those who are closest to us. Your aunts, your uncles, your nephews, your nieces, your grandparents and so on. And your, your, 
uh, c- certain, a certain circle of your relatives that are mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are extremely close to you, you will not marry them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter. And before I move to the next point, we need to realize that I was saying when you are marrying, look for the father of your children. Think to yourself, is this person fit to be the mother of my children or the father of my children, depending on whether it is the man or the woman who is, who is looking into this. And if they are not fit for that, then opt for someone else. No matter how, how blossoming it sounds and how beautifying it sounds. As I say, you see the lamps that we have here. The light, the bulb that you have, one day it will pop. The light that you have, one day it will pop. Subhanallah. So if you marry someone for the bright look on their, on their faces, one day that bright look will pop. It will go. When the creases start coming below the eyes, then people begin to turn for others. May Allah protect us. But if you married them for the heart, for what you love inside, that will only increase and develop as the years go further. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it is important that when a woman wants to marry, you don't block her for no reason. If you are the father of a female, you don't block her for no reason. A woman wants to marry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who are married. When they are having a problem and they are separated, then they want to get back to their husbands. Sometimes you get family members who come to them and say, no, don't. If they want to get back and if they want to marry them or remarry them in the case where it is allowed, then in that particular case, if you block them, then you will be a major sinner. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't block the females from marrying whom they would like to marry. Unless obviously there is an Islamic reason for you to block it, like the man is a drunkard or he is a drug addict or he is extremely oppressive and so on. But if there is no Islamic reason, just because you don't get on with them, does not mean your daughter must not marry them. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَن يَنكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْا بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ in the instance of a woman who is separated or divorced and after that she wants to get back to the same individual if three divorces are not issued only one was issued or two and she still wants to get back to that man then you should allow her to get back if she wants don't block her and don't stop her on condition that the two have arrived at an understanding of goodness may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about the engagement let me clarify this for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word khitbah which means the engagement in Islam an engagement is only a confirmation that the two of us are going to get married that is already an engagement there is no party there is no distribution of sweets there is no nothing all that is excess it is culture and it is something that sometimes we make life difficult through the mere fact that two people have now two families have agreed that we are going to get married inshallah or the two are going to get married you are already engaged subhanallah there is nothing like an engagement ring in islam all that is extra it's excess and people who do it if they do it just out of happiness inshallah it should be okay but if they do it thinking that it's a must hey we're engaged where's my ring otherwise i'm going to break this engagement if that's the case you don't need to marry that woman believe me because when you marry she will ask you for your pay packet the day you get your salary. Allahu Akbar. And one day when your salary is less, she might even instruct you to move out of the house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. The hadith speaks about marriage and says, Inna min a'zamin nikahi barakatan aysaruha ma'una. Some of the marriages that are the most blessed are those that the least amount of wealth is used, least extravagance. You know, when we have marriages, we are taught to have a simple marriage. Why? Because it is an act of worship. Marriages are acts of worship. And this is why when we have our functions of walima, a walima is the function out of happiness. It is an act of worship that we have either at the hall or at the home. We must make sure that we do not engage in earning the anger of Allah. Marriage is half of your iman according to one of the narrations. The walima or that party is a celebration of half of your iman. 
if you are celebrating half of your iman by allowing women to come into the gathering who are not even dressed properly or the bride herself is half naked and the groom wants to sit with the females, then you are celebrating half of your iman by pleasing shaitan, your marriage won't work. It will not work, I guarantee that. Also, if you have had, for example, a function where there is a mixed gathering of male and female mixing and dining and whining, and everything haram happening. In that case, we are celebrating half of our iman. Let's think how we have just did that. We need to engage in tawbah, some of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. Some who are already married have already done that. Now do you know why you had problems in your marriage? May Allah protect us. Because the seed, when it was sown, you, you watered it with urine. May Allah protect us. And that is a very strict statement. It's very harsh, but it's a reality. Believe me, it makes us boil when we think of how people will please shaitan. May Allah not make us from that. And they won't listen to any of the ulama. They won't understand. Shaitan wants to contaminate you from the very celebration of half of your iman. That is why you'd rather not have the function if you would like to have it in a manner that will please shaitan. Feed two people at your house, that is enough. Feed the poor in an orphanage, that is enough. But if you would like to have gatherings where everyone besides Allah is going to be happy, only shaitan will be worshipped, then that is not the way to celebrate half of your iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors for us. Marriage is one of the most important thing everybody looks towards and looks forward to from a very early age. And this is why it is a reality. We need to discuss it and we need to spend our time in this regard. I think every single one of us, if ever we are getting married or we know of someone getting married or one of our children is getting married, let us instruct them and let us try and teach them to have that function or that party totally separated gathering within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we are in the masjid, we are totally separated. That is also an act of worship which is celebrating half of your iman. We lose it and we think it's a party. Immediately after the party, they go on honeymoon, they come back separated. May Allah protect us all. It is increasing because most people, even the most religious of people, when it comes to their functions, sometimes what they do, they compromise what is right and wrong. And if that is the case, how are we going to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We want children, we want offspring. The seed we sowed from day one was already wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us. This is why the nikah, the sunnah is to have it in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is the most blessed of places. It is the, not the house of the president, nor the most expensive house around. MashaAllah, on the day of happiness, yes, we are allowed to be happy. We wear new clothes and we wear this and we wear that. For the brides, the message is never ever wear something that will reveal your body the day you are going for that function because that body is a gift for your husband and not for the rest of humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then the next day when you attend another function and there is another bride whom your husband sees with even a better body because it is revealed, don't blame anyone besides yourself when he turns in that direction. May Allah protect us. So these are statements that require digestion. They are solid, they are serious and they are common sense. Really they are instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marriage is a gift, it is a holy union, it is a noble coming together of two individuals to increase the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to treat it like an act of worship, I think, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our eyes open and may He forgive our shortcomings. Remember, if you've erred in the past already, I see the gloomy faces once again looking at me. May Allah protect us all. We need to engage in tawbah and istighfar. Allah is most forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, most merciful. But we will not promote vice. And we will never ever swallow words of justice when we have to utter them just to please people. Another thing I'd like to bear in mind and, and I'd like everybody to bear it in mind is that it is prohibited for us to attend a function where haram is going to happen even if it is the nikah of your own father or brother or son or sister or uncle or aunt. You will not attend in order not to be from amongst those who have made shaitan happy when someone is supposed to be celebrating half of their iman. And it is about time the ulama of this ummah decide to abstain and boycott all those functions of walima where there is a mixed gathering. Let us not attend where there is a small cubicle in the corner only for ulama. Are the ulama the only males of the ummah? Just because they have beards and the rest of them are females? May Allah protect us all. No. That is an insult. To have a cubicle in a corner is like a commentary box when we are commentating for cricket. 
Really? Then they want us to give commentary from there in a corner to say, please give a lecture. Wallahi, it's better we don't attend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Because that is a celebration of half of Iman. How can the ulama bless a celebration of half of Iman being watered down by shaitan's water? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. We have every reason to cry. Wallahi, the ummah is degenerating into chaos. Because our children are so unruly. Because the day we got married, we never thought of the fact that we are marrying for children. We just got happy and trigger happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And if the ulama do not do something about this, we will never ever see a solution to this. Really. And we need to do something about it. Sometimes I've heard people saying, no, what are we going to do? You know, there's a little corner for us. That is not good enough, inshallah. If we've done it in the past, may Allah forgive myself and yourselves as well. But we will not repeat it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't we want a good ummah? Don't you want good children? Don't you want happiness? Don't you want the truth? Then why do you want to compromise it by one function that is going to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about the days when it is prohibited to consummate or to be intimate. The times and the seasons when it is prohibited to consummate and to be intimate. We are in Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says during the nights of Ramadan, yes it is permissible. You, you are permitted to be intimate during the nights of Ramadan. But during fasting, during the daylight, it is prohibited. You abstain from food, drink and permissible sexual desires. We are saying permissible because that which is prohibited is prohibited inside and outside Ramadan. But even that which is permissible for that moment, you abstain from it. So that you can appreciate it when it becomes permissible once again. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us appreciate our spouses. And to keep us with blinkers such that we look only in one direction. And our eyes do not wander left and right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about that in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the eves or the nights in Ramadan, you are permitted to be intimate with your spouses. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. During Hajj, also it is prohibited. Allah says, فَمَن فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Whomsoever Hajj is incumbent upon or compulsory upon, they go for Hajj. From the moment you don your ihram, that is the two pieces of cloth, right up to the time you make your tawaf ziyara for the Hajj itself, or right up to the time you come out of ihram for the case of Umrah, in that particular time, you are not allowed to be intimate with your spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Another point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about is the menstrual cycle. Whilst a woman is on her menstrual cycle, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ you are allowed to do absolutely anything you want with your spouses during the menstrual cycle besides the act of intercourse, besides being intimate with them. You are not, al- you are not allowed to be intimate with your spouse while she is in the menstrual cycle during that particular period. It is prohibited and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us in this regard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to live with goodness with your spouse. Listen to what Allah says, especially about the women folk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Live with them with total goodness. Live with them in a nice manner, in a polite manner. Live with your wives in a beautiful manner. And Allah says, you might dislike one or two things. You don't have to divorce because you don't like one or two things. If you don't like one or two things, there are another 50 things that are good, that might even come out of the same one or two bad. May Allah protect us. You might not like, for example, the way she looks so much. But the way she looks after your children and the way she brings them up and what she teaches them and the time she spends with them, your children may be the coolness of your eyes. You did not realize it came to you through the same wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And this is why immediately after telling us to be very polite and very good to our wives and for the wives, obviously to the husbands as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
فَإِن كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا If you dislike them, you might be disliking one thing, but Allah will create a lot of goodness even through the same thing. So when you dislike one thing, two things, five things, if you were to divorce your spouse because of five things that you didn't like, she might have had 500 things that were good that you won't realize except after the divorce. And you might get to someone else who might have 10 things that are wrong with her. Or she might have five things that are wrong with her which are even greater and which are more serious than those other five. Or she might even have just one thing. And the same applies to the females. Any small thing, I want a divorce, I want out. Anything, I want out. Because the man looked at you and his eyes were a little bit red and he seemed to be angry. No, I'm going home. Allahu Akbar. If that's the case, how are we going to work? Didn't I tell you at the beginning of this talk that marriage is a sacrifice. No room for laziness. You have to learn to sacrifice in marriage. A woman sacrifices almost her identity. Allahu Akbar. She gives up her house. She gives up her home. She gives up her family. She gives up her brothers and sisters. She travels. She gives up her whole lifestyle. She comes into your home, into your custody. She obviously misses her mother, her father. She misses her parents. How dare you keep her away from everybody? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection inshallah. Yes, if they are dangerous and they are bad and they are an evil influence, you need to talk to her and convince her. And you need to realize and understand, she then herself will minimize it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us dictators in the home who are ruling with an iron fist such that when people look at us, they feel so scared and worried. The marital home is not supposed to be a home of dictatorship. It is supposed to be a home of comfort and solace. A home of peace and tranquility. A home of understanding and tolerance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us stand up for our responsibilities inshallah. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you dislike one or two things, concentrate on the other matters that you love and you like. You might want to think my husband, he might be this way and that way, or he might not be able to speak to me with a soft tone, but he reads his salah five times, and he is a truthful, upright person, Allahu Akbar. That should be a reason for you to stay inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an opening. I have not yet crossed a quarter of the verses that I have written. And I am noticing that the hour is almost up. And therefore, inshallah, we will continue a part two of this particular subject tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeing that it is such an important subject, we need to learn, we need to teach, and we need to put into practice as well. We all want happiness. The answer is in the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will never ever be able to achieve happiness until and unless we surrender to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger have taught. Because if that is not the case, we will not be able to arrive at what is known as happiness. It might just be short term explosion of, of happiness, but it will not be a real meaningful bliss in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness until we meet again tomorrow with the remainder of this subject. We say, وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك